Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. This is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. That sounds terrible. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. <laughs> and you are Going In Raw. What's up? It's your girl, Sasha Banks, the legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. And you are tuned in to Going In Raw right now. How you doing? Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson and available wherever fine podcasts are in the audio realm. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Do it right now so you always get that Going In Raw feeling. <laughs> Why are you telling people to do it right now? Why not? Because they might forget. We're, we talk for like a freaking hour. What are they going to remember at the end of the show? No, do it right now. Just like Maybe they'll make a note. Maybe they'll get a post-it note right. The what? Bell thing. Nobody writes anything anymore. That's not true. Idiot. Patreon. Talk about Patreon, Larson. I don't want to now. Oh, no, you're just, I'm sorry. I didn't really mean you're an idiot. I don't really think you're you an idiot. You do mean it. You oh, mean it. no, listen. We're at Patreon at patreon.com slash Stephen Larson. We got all sorts of uh, contribution tiers. Outstanding, don't touch me. Outstanding rewards attached to every tier, including a $200,000 tier. <laughs> Ooh. Where I will. Oh, South of the Peninsula. I will, I, I will too sweet Steve. Woo. But that's the only way it'll ever happen. Too sweet. Too sweet. Too We're also sweet. at a Pro Wrestling Tees at ProWrestlingTees.com slash going into Raw. We have, I think, 13 designs. I lost track, including this one, Fun Wrestling. Yes. Um, just up this week, three new designs. There's more to come. Including Shock Steve. You can get that on a shirt. Three and different. Stretch. The problem is, like, the shirt names, like, so there's three color variations. It shows up as pink on the thing, but you can get pink, green, and black. It's just, like, the, the pink, the name is Helconia. And the and the green is called Irish. I don't know. They just say pink and green. I don't know. Black is black. Yeah. But well, they have they Alconia. have. There's at least what three or four different uh, green options on there. Yeah, I went with the most obnoxious one, which is Irish. Yeah, but I mean, they just can't call them green. Well, they yeah, you can. You call it green, light green, tree green, hmm. forest green. Variations on green. If somebody like, well, they are variations on green. They took the green out, out of each name. <laughs> I know. What the heck? Now nobody knows what it is. Anyways, uh, what's going on here? Oh yeah, and we're also. No, that's it. Okay, let's talk about uh, two hundred five live. Not neither show was really all that great this week. No, like there was some good stuff. I'm trying to think here, what was good in this one? Yeah, Davari versus Neville. I'm looking forward. That should be a good three-way. I think it's yeah, going to be three-way. Yeah. Um, you know, 205 Live kind of got off to a rough start because they started with a, a Neville interview backstage. But on the other hand, it was a Neville interview. Yeah, which are which is good, but save and they that. they got really close on his face. Too. Save that for the middle of the show. I don't think any they wrestling can't. show should start with a backstage interview. I don't get why they just don't start with like a, an extended video package. That's what they like usually re do. Recapping what That's happened. That's what they usually do. Yeah. Like they could have done a video package for Neville. this whole... TJP Rich Swan thing. Yeah. That would have been more effective than starting the show with an interview. Yeah, but I like Neville. Neville's I do great too. on the mic. Like Neville. I said, put that towards the middle of the show. Yeah. Or how about following this? a video no, package? This, if you want to take away from anything, that Brian Kendrick promo. Yeah, this whole thing with him and Jack Gallagher is getting really cringeworthy. Yeah. Oh, it's getting bad. The uh, I finally turned on it. I'm finally out of the, oh, it's Brian Kendrick, so at least it's kind of weird. No, it's just really bad. Yeah. Uh, it did, like you said, it started off with a Neville interview, um, and he basically talked about Akira Tozawa, and now Davari has entered into the picture. He's got a match coming up with Davari. That actually kicked off the show. We got a Davari promo in the ring, and he talked about uh, he said, I'm going to dedicate this match to, and it was another uh, Iranian wrestler. Olympic Gold medal winning wrestler. Of ye old days. It was... You said what year? I don't remember what it was. Yeah, I don't know. It was a black and white picture, though, so it was old-timey. Um, so I like I love Davari, though. I think yeah, he's great. I he's think been doing really, really, good, really, yeah. really great work. So um, he uh, Neville come, comes down for a match. Akira Tozawa comes down to do commentary. But basically, it wasn't really commentary. He was just sort of sitting there scouting yeah. Yeah. is what they were saying. Because they were trying to talk to him a little bit. He said, hey, how's that shoulder? And he was very cold about that. He said... My shoulder is fine. 
And then they talk about a little bit more saying, do you have to change your strategy? And he says, I told you my shoulder is fine. Yeah. So he's very defensive about his bum shoulder. Yeah, he is. Um, but Neville and Davari had a match, decent match. Um, and uh, sort of the distract, the general distraction of Devar or of uh, Akira Tozawa being out there, um, Neville took his eye off the prize, ended up uh, getting counted out. Yeah, didn't Davari throw Neville into Tozawa at ringside, or was it vice versa? Uh, that was towards the finish of the match. No, Davari threw Neville yeah. into Tozawa, and yeah. right as the ref's about to count ten, Davari gets back in the ring. Right, wins by count out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was good. I mean, it was it was what. It wasn't. It was what. It was what it was. It was a decent match. Yeah, it was it felt a kind of short. Match. Yeah, and it like what was the actual main event? Yeah, that should have been the main event too. Because mm-hmm. that's, that's a, two that, weeks that's in a row. feud right now. That's two weeks in a row that what probably should have been the main event opened the show. Last yeah. Week, oh, the two out of three falls. That match. should definitely have been the main event. Glad you know. I I hope you know. Glad those guys didn't have to wrestle this week because mm-hmm. they need to take some time mm-hmm. off in that two out of three falls match, especially uh, Gulak. Yeah. Oh boy. Still reeling from that reverse runner. Oh yeah. Uh, so then we had, oh man, this this feud has definitely jumped the shark, dude. Brian Kendrick. I mean, none of the stuff they've done has been good, but this one, this this has really solidified the fact that it's not good at all. This has made the other stuff feel even worse than I originally felt it was. I think that got me on the same page as everybody else on that other stuff. Because like now I look back, I'm like. Brian Kendrick in a wig, Brian Kendrick dressing up like Jack Gallagher. It's just, it's all, this was the, None of this it's was good. the topper. He had like a picture of Gallagher. He was saying Gallagher is a clown. Yeah. And so he was very slowly, very uninterestingly uh, pointing out the specifics as to why Jack Gallagher is a clown. He had a picture of Gallagher on the Titan Tron and, he would. He, he first he did his like he made his hair into a no first well at first he said he's look at his his his, uh, his pale his complexion pale skin and then you look and it's like they photoshopped clown makeup yeah. on him and then he talks about his mustache I think yeah and then something like that turns into a clown thing and then he talks about his hair and, and then, then his hair the, turning clown hair the, yeah the wig yeah yeah. Oh, it was so long and it was so it was boring. Horrible. It was so bad. Horrible. And then Jack Gallagher comes out and says, you know. I'm not going to talk. I want to fight. And then yeah, he says, I tried to be a gentleman away. last week, but I'm not going to do that anymore while you besmirch my name. Honestly, if he really wanted to injure Brian Kendrick, he should have just left him out there. I know. <laughs> because he was already dying. I dude. know. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways. After that, we had an interview backstage with Cedric Alexander and Rich Swan. It was interrupted by TJP and Tony Nese. This wasn't a very good segment either. No, it was. It was a very awkward interview. There was way too much. To, there was too much dialogue. There was like, especially when Cedric hopped in. There was too much overly scripted dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Cedric was, but like none of these guys had their timing right. Like there was too many awkward beats. It was just, it was all bad. But when when you have four people and they're probably handed the script during the main event of, uh, of SmackDown. Like and they had to like memorize. Why you say this? Then I say this. Then you hop in, and you can tell they're all just trying to figure out their lines mm-hmm. on the spot. Mm-hmm. God, it was it was bad. It was really this, so. Like the general gist of it was, this is supposed to be a, a friendly competition tag team match, but they're all going a little overboard in their trash talking. And it seems like TJP has has completely forsaken face TJP. Yeah. Um, by enlisting the help of Tony Nice. Yeah. In his ab vest. Um, which took us to our main event, TJP and Tony Nese versus Rich Swan and Cedric Alexander. I like how they changed up the lighting for Tony Nese's entrance. How did this wait? What? There were only two matches on this? Yeah. And the first one did feel brief. Yeah. The was this match. like a 45-minute match or no, something? No, it was 20 minutes, but the Kendrick thing The Kendrick thing was, was like 45 minutes. minutes, yeah. Unless something else happened, and I didn't write it down. I don't think so, though. I'll check. No, I think you're right about that. Um, I like I like how they changed uh, Tony Nese's lighting so when he stands at the top of the ramp, it's much more dramatic. Oh, I kind of noticed that too. Yeah. And, and it highlights his musculature much better. And he's uh, getting a bit more comfortable with his trash talk. He's getting a bit more comfortable with his heel character. Yeah. He comes down. He starts running down the, the, the various audience. Okay, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Go back. I see that stupid-ass little picture. Yeah. <laughs> a little Photoshop of... Uh, of Gallagher, it was kind of funny. <laughs> Why was I, I forgot that Gallagher was standing in like uh, the Milky Way? Hold on, let me get See? to it. 
Yeah, why is he standing in like a star field? I don't know. It's, that's kind of funny. Like that image alone on you can't, its own. You can't take that one isolated image yeah. and assume the, re- the whole segment was good because it was you're not. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. But what actually would have been funny is if, is if Brian Kendrick started running down Gallagher. Didn't refer to him as a clown at all, but to illustrate who he's talking about he says let's take a look at him up there and he no sells the fact that he's a clown up there oh okay like he 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 had already done the photoshopping he already did the photoshopping didn't refer to him a clown didn't make it sound he just started he started talking about him like as a as a as a you know a crap competitor or something like that yeah but like no sold the fact that this whole gimmick this whole feud is about brian kendrick calling jack gallagher a clown but never actually calling him a clown <laughs> That'd probably go over some people's head, though. <laughs> it would be aw- Hey, I'd be sitting here praising the shit out of it, though. Be like, can we talk about this? Why do you have a Photoshop of him as a clown? That would have been good. See? Book me as writer. Anyways, uh, yeah, that led to our only real match of the night, and that was Cedric Alexander and Rich Swan. Uh, for- hey, they made a good team, though. Why was Rich Swan wearing long pants? Yeah, he had new pants. We had pants. It made... <laughs> It made him look a bit more pedestrian because usually he's like the fancy trunks and, you know, he's, he's an athletic guy. But first off, here, here, was this like a practice run episode of 205 Live? Like they just shot it. It was supposed to be a house show and they just shot it. Yeah, it was so bad. It was like looking at it again. This is bad. Like, uh, what's his face? Because Rich Swan's pants, they're not like... Look, he's a very flamboyant character. He comes out there, and I swear, like, two weeks ago, he came out, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to mention this on the show, but he came out, and he was sort of, he was so hyped. He was kind of shaking. I was like, if Rich Swan's character is he's on cocaine right now, it totally fits, because he was kind of too much. But that being said, you know, he comes out dancing and stuff, and he usually has, like, very bright, Mm -hmm, colorful mm -hmm, chunks. mm -hmm. Well, these were, like, black, kind of loose (laughs) pants. They look almost like they look. Pants. They look like uh, the same cut of pant that Kenny Omega wears. Right, same fabric, just without any logos or anything on it. But the problem is, Rich Swan, while an athletic guy, is not an overwhelmingly athletic-looking guy. Like Tony Nice looks like a specimen. You know what does he call himself? The premier athlete, mm-hmm. something like that. He looks the part. Rich Swan isn't supposed to look. I mean, he doesn't need to look like an amazing athlete because that's not his gimmick. But he shouldn't be wearing like sweat. <laughs> he looks like just slacker guy in there, especially next to his tag team partner Cedric Alexander, who again is a perfect specimen of a man, and he's wearing trunks that are like really cool looking. Whereas Rich Swan comes out there, <laughs> he's got like some pants on that it looks like he got from a garage sale. Yeah, it was odd. It was odd. I'm just saying, like I just it was just really obvious when he was in there with Tony Nice. Who, yeah, he's got the weird ab vest, but once he takes it off, it's like immaculate body, and he's like counting his abs and stuff, and he's got like these like shining white trunks, and he looks great. <laughs> it's like Rich Swan, who looks like he's coming out of a Seven Eleven or something. I'm just saying, it's a little striking. So wait, what happened with this match? Um, there's some decent back and forth. Hey, anytime Cedric Alexander does the, uh, the oh I, Spanish fly. The Spanish fly is really cool, but yeah. when he comes off the when whenever he does like the 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 Jay Lethal, the Jay Lethal is the first guy I saw do. It. That's why I oh, refer to the, him. The handspring, the moves. handspring. Yeah, that's cool. I love that. Yeah. I just love how Jay Lethal does it. Oh yeah, because ninety percent of the move he does with his arms down here. Oh, I know. He just launches himself in the very last second. He like does. I know. This. I noticed that too with the G one shows. Like when he actually does the flip to bounce against. The oh, ropes, it's brilliant. His hands are not out at <laughs> his all. His hands are like down. And he gets them down at the last minute. It seems like the <laughs> last amazing. second. It's amazing. Um, Cedric Alexander does something kind of like he does that. He does a handspring thing. It doesn't do a kick. Off. Yeah, it doesn't do a kick. It looks great. Um, I mean, there was some good. There were some really good moves here. There was some really good action here. Um, Cedric Alexander is is a stud. That dude needs to go up to main roster. Yeah. Like this should be a springboard for him to go to main roster. Yeah. I could totally see that. But he's like one of the very few guys that I could see that with. Like Neville, of course, but Neville's so good as the foundation piece. Mm-hmm. It's, it, to me, it's like Cedric Alexander. He's big enough. Yeah. So that it would make sense yeah. for him. To, and he can still put on, as we know, he like lost what, 20 pounds or something? Yeah. yeah. Put that back on. Yeah. Bring him up to Maine, like give him a sort of a cocky gimmick thing. 
But I feel like even he's getting more comfortable in his character. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, even through the scripted dialogue, like, I don't know. I just feel like he's getting more comfortable with who he is on, in front of the camera. Yeah. Agreed. So, the finish of this match saw uh, Cedric Alexander step for his springboard clothesline forearm type deal. Right. He went up to the top rope. Tony yeah. East pushed him off. TJ uh, P took advantage, got the roll up and the win. So, he proved... That he is better than Rich Swan this week. Yeah. Rich Swan really, I feel like, didn't bring it from step one with his pants. choice of pants. You know. Maybe now he sees that the pants are not part he's of a like, winning formula. He's like, where's my trunks? Crap. Is there a place I can? There's a Walmart around the corner. Perfect. I'm pretty sure they have $6 sweatpants there. I'm going to go put those well, on. Well, they didn't look like sweatpants because they look they looked like the same fabric as Kenny Omega's pants. They had, they, no, they had that texture. They had like a, a certain. Like a vinyl type. You're look right. To it was it. like yeah. a vinyl like look to it. But then like the the fit was just loose, was loose on yeah. him. I mean, Kenny Omega's pants are loose too. I know, but he's stud. He's like, Rich Swan is sort of a thinner guy. He's a cruiserweight. Kenny's like a. He's got like a great look. He's like he fills it out good. Okay. Rich Swan just looks like a dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just doesn't work for him, man. Anyways, I can't handle that. Let's talk to let's talk about NXT. It was an interesting episode of NXT. Because, what was your assessment off camera? I like when he said this. Oh, there was a lot of jobber matches, <laughs> and I don't mind it from time heavy to time. Heavy on jobber matches. But three of the four matches involved uh, enhancement talent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit much. Although Cesar Bononi has been on TV a lot more recently, he's not. He hasn't. He hasn't taken that step into full no. He character. He, no, he hasn't. He hasn't found his character with new. They name haven't yet. given him new name and actual gimmick. Yeah, right now he's just Cesar Banana. Yeah, but he is enhancement talent in NXT right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the show kicked off with Ember Moon mm-hmm. taking on Lady Tapa. Lady Tapa. Yeah. yeah. Lady Tapa. She's big. Yeah. She's like almost Nia Jack size, yeah. I think. And uh, she came out swinging. She attacked Ember Moon off the uh from, Yeah, she from hit the her bell. with a, a, a pretty huge clothesline to start the match. Right. But Ember Moon was able to rally, hit the eclipse, got the win. Then she gets the match, on yeah. the mic, calls out Eska. Wants a match for the women's title at TakeOver Brooklyn 3. What are the odds that she's going to win at Brooklyn 3? I think it's pretty decent. Really? You mm-hmm. think it's high? Mm-hmm. Over 50%? Mm, barely. Mm. Yeah, I know. Me too. I don't see it happening, but they might just want to move this along. That would be an absolute bummer, though. I really do think they've got something special with this streak of Oscars. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say it's not going to okay. happen. I'm going to say it's at 15%. All right. We still have three weeks till takeover, so we'll see how things Man, They like to move things along, though. They like to move things along. Yes. Next, uh, David Ramos and Timothy Bumpers. Oh, wow. I didn't catch his name. That's amazing. I was looking name. at those guys. I was like, oh, they're my fa- new favorite tag team. They didn't um, get their name. They though. were supposed to take on the Authors of Pain, but before the match could start, uh, Nikki Cross intercepts the authors of pain um, on the ramp. Oh, I like that. Distracting them kind of while Sandy comes in from behind, beats up Ramos and Bumpers. <laughs> um, uh, authors of pain come into the ring. They have a stare down. They yeah. fight. Yeah. Authors of pain get the upper hand. They stand tall at the end of the segment. Well done. Well done, authors of pain. So it seems like we're going to get some sort of program between authors of pain and Sandy leaning into takeover. Certainly feels like it. I love that Nikki Cross came down with them. Yeah. And that she was sort of like, I don't know, like the 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 moxie on her to like stare down and, and, and heckle the authors of pain. I know. I mean, you know they're not going to do anything to a lady. Yeah. But I love that. I know. Like any other like character, you know, uh, would be terrified to do that. But not her. Not her. Not I her. love that. It's fantastic. I know. It's good. It's real good. It's really good. Um, next, another Street Profits video package. I love these. Oh, yeah. They're so dumb. They're so entertaining, though. I don't know. Just because, like, you know, I got all the kids around here on the Snapchat and everything and seeing, like, I don't know. It's so, it's so well done. It's it so is. perfect for who I think they're supposed to be. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's evident already, and I think I said this last week, that, that Dawkins and Ford have really good chemistry. Yeah, I want to see what... I get the feeling there might be some minor kind of swerve with their gimmick, and I don't know what that's going to be. But I, 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 something tells me this isn't just going to be this at face value. I think something else is going to happen to be part of their gimmick. I don't know what that could be. 
But in any event, I love it. I think it's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. I think they're good. Yeah. Be interesting to see, like, because they've been they've been on the circuit for a while together. Mm-hmm. I want to see what kind of tag chemistry they have. Yeah. Because hope- we've seen Angelo Dawkins. Yeah. I like him. Yeah. yeah he's like an athletic too. dude. Yeah. I'm hoping since they have done the the developmental circuit in Florida with NXT, the house shows that they've gotten in a, a good number of matches under the mm-hmm. belt, so they have really good chemistry. Yeah. 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 Uh, next up, we had No Way Jose coming in from the parking lot. He's walking through the parking lot, showing up at full sale, nodding to a couple people off camera that yeah. probably didn't exist. And then uh, Thea Trinidad. What's her name now? Zelina Vega? Z- Zelina? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, she approaches No Way Jose and says, essentially, don't cross us. Do not cross us. Yeah. Zelina Vega. Zelina Vega. So, and Noe Jose just sort of does his little facial expressions. He's like, he smiles. <laughs> he's like a, he's like one of those animatronic guys. Like he's like, I'd like Chuck E. Cheese. Anyways, um, next up we had the Velveteen Dream. Uh, definitely candidate for, uh, potential candidate for going in Raw Wrestler of the Year uh, versus Cesar Banana. And, uh, yeah, Velveteen Dream is, like, ridiculously athletic. Yeah. That dude's got a really weird body, but it's, like, just 100%. Like, his attributes for athleticism oh, is, like, or, all the way up. All the up. way up, yeah. Yeah. But he's also very, like, lanky. I don't yeah. know. It's, like, it's... He's like like a, one of those human anatomy displays. He's, <laughs> he seems like every week, week by week, he's inhabiting that character a lot more. Oh, I know. It's great. It's fantastic. Um, so, anyways, he got the win with the Purple Rainmaker. That seems to be the official name for his top rope elbow now. Yeah, that's great. And then uh, he gave an interview where he established his heel bona fides. What did he call it? He said, like, the NXT universe is ugly or something like that? Yeah, and he said the the moderately well-dressed interviewer. Yes. He yeah. might talk to her, but he's not going to talk to any of the anybody else. All right. the, uh, the, uh, all the uh, ugly people, I guess he said, yeah. the NXT universe, something like that. I thought that was great. Yeah, that was good. I love the Velveteen Dream. Um, next up, we had, uh, I forget her name, but one of the interview bots, she was talking to William Regal, and uh, he said, uh, we're going to get at TakeOver or- Take over Brooklyn 3, Ember Moon versus Asuka mm-hmm. for the NXT Women's Championship. Let me ask you something. What? I think I said this last week. Have you noticed that the audio on NXT is all over the place? <laughs> I, had to, I had to turn up my TV a bunch to hear yeah. any of this. Yeah. And then when Moro came back on, it, Whoa, sound, are you? it sounded like he was yelling right next to me. It's like they, they mix NXT to be listened to on headphones and not can, watched on an actual television. I can confirm. We've got a little. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the developmental aspect of NXT makes it so entertaining to talk about it because I think you're right. Dude, I don't know how they do. Ashka. Oh, Peninsula. Nicki Minaj. Ooh. Anyways, uh, <laughs> next up we had the perfect man. Yeah. The Perfectly computerized man of the 2010s. Yes, Drew McIntyre came out, dropped a promo. I thought it was very effective. This reminded me of his promo, the, like the first day. It's so weird. When he first left WWE and he showed up in, I think, ICW. Um, and he gets in the ring and he cuts a mic. And it's just a liberating thing, yeah. like, finally. And it was like full of passion and fire. And, and it, like the video kind of went viral in the wrestling circles. And everybody was like, oh, my God, where was this in WWE? And it reminded me of that. And yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. They're yeah. letting him do this in WWE. Yeah, That's he cool. referred to his chosen one phase mm-hmm. and uh, said that just that let him have a sense of entitlement. Yeah. And he wasn't a hard worker. Cool. So he left WWE and learned that hard work gets gets you the things you want in life. I appreciate that that's the, the, the thread that he has agreed to go with because it was more like, you know, WWE put him in three-man band. Yeah. I don't think there's much. Then when Vince McMahon literally called, oh, you're the chosen one. Well, then, yeah, you probably would be, you know, anyways. But anyway, so he, he said, you know, uh, he finished with saying, you know, this isn't Bobby Roode's NXT. Yeah. This is your NXT, your NXT, your you NXT. You get an NXT, you get an NXT, yeah, and you get an NXT. All of our NXT, because yeah. we are NXT. Everybody look under your chair, you get an NXT. And it was great. He said, everybody in this arena, stand up. Everybody watching at home, stand up. I didn't, did you? No. No, me neither. But everybody in NXT did. So yeah. that was, cause it's awkward if I were if in don't. the arena, I would have stood I up. I would have stood up, too, because it's awkward if you don't. Yeah. It's like, come on. 
Why don't you stand it? Unless, unless I was sitting there in like a a, a a nice suit. Oh yeah. Obviously, one of the CEOs that Bobby Roode wanted to start attending. Oh yeah, yeah, the next sure. T shows, and I wouldn't have stood up. Really? No. Why not? You don't want to get into the show? No, because I'm obviously a Bobby Roode mark. I would have been kind of annoyed if I had like nachos and popcorn, like for the House of Horrors match, and I was like trying to juggle them all, and then he's like, "All right, stand up, everybody," and I'd be like. We just gotta, man. You just gotta use your face to eat your popcorn. No, I just, just like, hold it. I just been. I just. I just, I just sat things. there and be like, "Hey, you, what are you doing?" I just said, "Stand up," and I'm like, "Look, Drew, you're the chosen one. I've chosen to sit here and eat my food." <laughs> oh, he says I have a sen- he have a sense of entitlement to fill my tummy. Exactly, my tummy's entitled to some nachos. <laughs> Uh, next up, we had a Raul. This is great. Anytime Raul Mendoza's on my uh, on my screen, yeah, he's I'm taking very on happy. Johnny Gargano. Yeah, next week, I believe. Uh, yeah, I like this because she was like asking about Johnny Gargano, and uh, and he was like, uh, maybe we will not talk about Johnny Gargano. Maybe we will talk about the return of Raul Mendoza. I'm like, fool, you're a jobber. Get out of here. You're going to lose Johnny Wrestling. But be happy you got some interview time yep. here. I mean, what's he supposed to say? Yeah, let's talk more about this Johnny Gargano. He is a good wrestler. That's why they call him Wani Wrestling. <laughs> Actual Raul. It's Johnny Wrestling. Next up, we had Cassius Ono versus Adeo Itami. Our main event. What is with all these low blows? Go and I'm south of the peninsula. Go. I don't know. That, that seems to be the preferred finish these days. How'd you like Cash? <laughs> yeah, it is the preferred finish. How'd you like Cash Zono uh, coming out in that King's gear? It's the same stuff you wore at uh, TakeOver Orlando. I know. It's great. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. He was wearing, uh, cause I noticed last time he had a match when he was wearing his Bulls inspired gear, he had uh, sh- uh, his wrestling boots were inspired by shoes Scotty Pippen used to wear. Oh, nice. And I was trying to tell uh, if his boots were inspired by basketball shoes Mitch Richmond and they look kind of like some old Jordans I don't remember exactly which model but it yeah. kind of reminded me of them a little bit but I like how he he ties in his boots to his 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 ring gear yeah yeah, yeah. there is little subtle touches that are that are nice that he yeah no it's good stuff um this is a really fun match actually yeah it was really low blow physical thing. yeah it was and Cassius Ono was like you know I've, I've I never really saw any of his like really highly acclaimed indie stuff did he go to Japan I think Morrow mentioned something about Japan, yeah. but I don't know where in Japan. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, but uh, but he was doing a lot of the stuff that you look at him, you know, a man of his size doing like, you know, bouncing up and down and through the ropes and jumping over the ropes and stuff like that. And it's like, whoa, man, that is so impressive. Like, yeah. he is such a fun wrestler to watch, yeah, he man. Is. He is so much fun to watch. Uh, what do you got? For pro us? wrestling Noah. OK. All right. Oh, I wonder if him and uh, Adeo were there together. Could be. Because there was like maybe a year or so. Uh, January 2009 in Pro Wrestling Noah. Maybe. Ooh. It's like 2009, 2010. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, 2014 too. We wrestled for the, in the, the Global Tag League. Well, if he was there that early in 2010, then yeah, maybe he did. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Uh, Kenta Kobashi was mm-hmm. there. Kobayashi. Um. Anyways, yeah, uh, Deo Tommy kicks Ono in the balls. Ono wins by DQ. Then a tam- a Tommy, who had left, comes back to attack Cassius Ono. No, actually, um, he gives he gives him he attacks him right after the bell. Gives him two GTSs. Then goes up the ramp. Comes back for the oh okay the GTS on the ring. Okay, steps. okay, I got you. Um, is this going to continue? Or are we going to see this again at Takeover? I hope so. I would think so. Next week we're going to get William Regal say next week there's Sean Garcia, Deo Tommy versus. Oh, look at the match we got. Oh, no. Anyways, let's take some questions about this week's 205 Live and NXT episodes. We're going to do that over on the Patreon. Um, From $1 and up, we post these questions. Yes. So you guys can get your question read. Dom the Man Hilbert. Dom the Man. Hey, friendos. Power rank the following wrestlers' elbow drops. First, Bailey's Macho Man Elbow. Velveteen Dreams Purple Rainmaker, Xavier Woods Springboard Elbow, Zack Ryder's El Bro Drop, and Kyrie Sane's Flying Elbow. One is the Flying Elbow. Oh, Kyrie Sane for yeah. sure, number one. Two, Xavier Woods Springboard Elbow. That's impressive. I agree completely. Three, 
I'm going to say the Purple, purple Rainmaker. Rainmaker. Purple he gets Rainmaker. up there so high. Four. I don't rem- I don't. I mean, what Zack Ryder's elbow drop and Bailey's Macho Man elbow are kind of like same. Same, yeah. Or there's not really a big. No. Neither of them really stand out. Yes. All right. Let's see here. Terrence Thompson's Uncensored. Instead of Galloway versus Rude, would you have preferred the strong Rude feud to have gone through TakeOver Brooklyn with Strong winning the championship, leading to Strong versus Galloway? The first part of that, yes. The second part, probably not. I, I, yeah, I wanted to see Strong Rude too at TakeOver. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I would not have wanted to see Roderick Strong pick up the title at that point. Mm-mm. Maybe he takes the scenic route and then comes back to get it later on. I wonder on. if Roderick Strong is going to kind of take uh, Ty Dillinger's story. <clears throat> Maybe. And then get called up before it goes anywhere. Probably. Yeah. Um, Mohit Bali. On a scale of 1 to 10, how badly would you want Neville to answer a AJ Styles U.S. title open challenge? Uh, eight. How much would I want who? Neville. Oh, all the. Nine. Yeah. yeah. A well, lot. Nine's not all the. Um, let's see here. Hamza Halal. Since it's been a month or so since Morrow has returned to doing commentary in NXT... Which is better, his NXT commentary or his SmackDown commentary, and why? NXT because there's uh, less of the uh, well, a couple reasons. Number one, he doesn't. There's not that obvious tension between him and JBL. Mm-hmm. Number two, he's not as he doesn't go as hard on the pop culture references. Yeah, he had one last night that yeah. was shoehorned in there, but otherwise, yeah, yeah, he's he's been way better on NXT. Oh, here we go. A similar question, Eric Blaha. Eric, I'm sorry, <laughs> Eric. Let me ask you something. Blaha. Uh, now that we've seen the new commentary crews for a few weeks, power rank the crews from the four shows. Um, to me, number one is Raw because Corey Graves and Booker T, and Michael Cole, they legitimately seem to have a lot of fun. Yes. And they, it's it's always little things, the little moments they get together. Most obvious is the Elias Sampson stuff, where Cole and Booker T love his musical aspect of things, and, yeah. and Corey Graves is beside himself. Yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, it's good. Um, I would say number two for me would be who was on SmackDown? Tom Phillips, JBL, uh, and Saxton. And Saxton, they're good. They're good. Nothing stands out about them. Yeah. So I would. Pr- I mean, and which is which is good. Yeah. So I mean, like Vic Joseph and Corey Graves, good, good. They don't detract from the show, but it's not the same as Tom Phillips and Corey Graves, you know. Yeah, you're right. I would probably give NXT two because I get to hear Nigel McGuinness. Mm-hmm. And Morrow's been good. Mm-hmm. He's been good. And then and Percy's picking things up, but he's kind of a he doesn't really he's a he's a net what is it, net neutral, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you raw NXT Raw NXT SmackDown, Smackdown two oh five left. Yeah. But there there's there was no commentary teams and I'm like, Oh, this is crap, I can't yeah. listen to this crap. Um, Mayor of Planet Houston. I just read somewhere an article that said Sacramento had the worst drivers in the country. Do either of you contribute to that fact, and who is the better driver? Let's answer that first. There is a, a wrestling question here, too. I'm a safer driver. Whether that in your mind is better or not, I don't know. I drive faster. Yes, you do. Um, I have a better sense of direction. That's true, but then these days with GPS, who really cares? I never, I never hardly ever use GPS. Well, there you go. I do. So, like, my phone has a better sense of direction than you. Okay. <laughs> so, what if you're in a place I where win you that can't one. get reception? You need to know where north is. You, just, you don't know. This is 2017. Every place has reception. That's actually not true. I'm not going to be driving in Antarctica. Do you know how to read a map? Yes, I know how to read a map, you idiot. Do you have a map in your car? Not anymore. Well, then why are you even asking me that? I'm curious. I'm a better driver. That drink flare. No, there's more question here. Which wrestlers do you think are the best drivers and which do you think are the worst? And which would you love to go on a road trip with? Best driver. John Cena is probably the safest driver. I imagine he follows all speed limits. Yeah, John Cena is like me. All rules. Yeah, I'm like Cena. Okay. Yeah. Worst driver. Vince McMahon, didn't he just get into an accident? Dean Ambrose. Oh, really? You think so? Yeah. I mean, in character, yeah. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> in character? Braun Strowman. Are you kidding me? Well, he, he, He's walking road rage. Yeah, I guess that's true. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, Dean might be like a fun driver. Like, you know, come on, it's Dean, so he's like a wacky driver. Yeah. Braun, well, I mean, actually, if you want to think about it, Roman Reigns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's 
He's tried to kill people with a, with a car before. Exactly. Vehicular manslaughter attempt. Bro. Yeah. How can you argue with that? And which would you love to go on a road trip with? Some the club and AJ. Stories, yeah. The club and AJ. Yeah. That, that's a, a good answer. A million times over. The club and AJ. Uh, that drink flair doesn't need. Question attempt number three. Well, you know what they say. Three is the lucky number or something. Anyways, with rumors circulating about another superstar shakeup, one of the things I've read, according to Dave Meltzer, is a shakeup is being looked at as a means to put some higher level talent from Raw SmackDown onto NXT. So, Power Rank, which current Raw or SmackDown superstars do you most likely see headed to NXT? Once again, your question will not be answered because we literally Power Rank that on tomorrow's episode. No, next week's. What? What? On the, oh, the yeah, dirt sheet, sheet sorry. And then next week, we're going to do a count out on shakeup stuff. Correct. So you have two opportunities to kind of get that, that question so answered. It's not that we're not answering it. We're just not answering it now. We're going to answer it in depth over two episodes yeah. of our product. Yes. Crockpot champion, the uncanny iron fish. Hey, friend knows would it behoove WWE to put cruiserweight championship matches on NXT takeovers before big shows like SummerSlam and Mania? No. Wait, I'm s- oh on main pro on like wait what? Yes, put NX put cruiserweight sh- uh, championship matches on NXT no, takeover. No, 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 no. But two hundred five live should have their own takeover style events. They absolutely should. Yeah, yeah, I will say that the United Kingdom Championship should be defended at takeovers. All of them. Well, I mean, you know, we're, we've given we've been given the sample size of how amazing that match was. But that being said, I just want their own damn show. I know, but they got to, until that show happens. They need to keep. I know, I Those know. Those competitors in people's minds, the best way to do that is, is to have them be involved in at least NXT. Yeah, but could you imagine what happened, Like, what would happen if they started defending that title like on pay-per-views? Oh, I want that to happen. I thought they should have been defended at WrestleMania. I know. Every belt should be defended, defended at WrestleMania. I know, man, I know. Jack Dolan. Um, we already Danger shot, Dolan. We already shot Dirt Sheet, so we can't put on Dirt Sheet. Would you rather be on American Gladiators or Nickelodeon's Guts? Oh, uh, what a great... Mm, wait, hold on a second. I don't know dick about Nickelodeon's guts. I don't either. So I'm going to say American Gladiators. Yeah, man. That'd be awesome. I would probably be terrible. In my current shape, I would probably be terrible. You'd probably be decent American Gladiators. You've been working out. Like, yeah. I could see. But some. Well, okay, let me ask you this. If you can remember. Remember. Uh, what. What challenge in American Gladiators would you fear the most? It wouldn't be the one where the guys are shooting tennis balls at you. <laughs> ah, I forgot about that one. Oh, I can't believe you remember that. One, it, because I mean, I'll, I'll, and I'm just saying this, and it's not exactly a good reason. I've been hit with enough baseballs, playing baseball, that a tennis ball, well, probably it would hurt. It's not the same Can't as be a, that bad. It's not the same as a no, heavy. No, I don't baseball. remember anybody being like, "Oh that's, God, that's the one where you're standing on the pedestals and you have the giant Q-tips." Oh, I hate that. You that's the one I do most, not want yeah. to do. Yeah. For me, it just I would literally have a heart, have a heart attack in the final challenge. The one where you have to I would not complete you have to, like it. dunk the balls in the nets. Yeah. While getting tackled. oh, that looks fun. It looks it looks fun, but also has the highest probability of getting hurt. <laughs> Because those gladiators will come and just lay you out. I would be trying to climb that wall for like a good 30 minutes. They'd be like, yeah. we're about to turn the lights out. No, I can do this. I am gladiator. Do you remember uh, the names of the gladiators? Oh, no. There was Laser. Mm-hmm. That's all I remember. So I, one, of, one or two of them dudes ended up in like WCW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them wrestlers, yeah. Oh, man. I miss American gladiators. But only classic American gladiators. Yes. None of the new crap. Anyway, is that it? Uh, penultimate Tommy Wiseau, which wrestling move, when seen performed, would you classify as the wrestler performing the Steve special and the Larson special, respectively? Wait, I don't get it. What? So, like, for example, if you were a wrestler and your finisher or move was, say, second rope pile driver. Oh, sure, yeah. Would that be the Steve special or Larson special? Well, that'd be... You came in and immediately started talking about the second rope pile driver. I'll take that one. And sometimes you get, like, a gleam in your eye. When you talk about stuff, and you definitely had a gleam in your eye when you talked about the second row pile driver. Oh, something else, man. Oh, man. I know there's one for me. Just trying to think of what it is. Crap, man, this is bugging me. I, because I can't get Elgin's... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's top the, rope. That's the, only, that's the other thing about that too. I, man, I would never want to do that move, nor would I want, ever want to take that move. Um, I'm gonna say, and it's funny because I'm only thinking about New Japan right now. 
I don't think about anybody. That Did you watch? The oh, video. I'm going to say the Black Mass. Did you watch the video that New Japan put up of the sequence from the Omega Elgin match? What happened? Oh, there was like a uh, corner power bomb, and it was it was crazy. Just the sequence of events. Oh, I got to check that out. We cry. I I really want to watch that match. That's what I'm hoping to do when I'm traveling to and back from vacation. Oh, it's just good sit idea. Sit for my iPad and watch a bunch of absolutely G1 matches. Sounds awesome. Um, Second City Champion A.O. Worm, what stipulation should Asuka versus Ember Moon have? Okay, well, it has to relate to their previous match where Asuka, like, Ugh. tossed a ref in the way. I guess no DQ. I mean, they already did last man standing with uh, Nikki mm-hmm. Cross. But an I quit match. Yeah, oh, oh, man. That would be good because Asuka, they've been doing this sort of arrogant Asuka thing lately, and that's always plays good into the and I, and I mm-hmm. quit thing. Mm-hmm. And the Moon's supposed to be like the resilient. Yeah, the one and Asuka is the down. one that has the, 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 the bevy of submission moves at mm-hmm. her disposal, whereas uh, Ember Moon has this absolutely destructive finisher. Yeah. Yeah. So. I like the I, I, the I quit match. That's good. Yeah, I think that'd be good too. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, sure. All right, fine. Thanks for tuning in. Catch the dirt sheet tomorrow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button in case you didn't do it when I told you to earlier. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.